Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new script we created while working on a recent project. All right, so here's a scenario. It's nighttime, you're lost in the woods, you have a baloney sandwich, two waterproof matches, and a cell phone with enough battery to make one phone call. So, do you call the police and try to give them directions to a place you obviously don't know? B, start the woods on fire and hopefully someone will find you, most likely burned alive, or C, cut off your arm, make up a courageous story about escaping a bear attack. And the correct answer is D, all of the above. Now actually, the scenario for this particular script is say you've just shot a music video or you're doing a commercial that happens to have a lot of visual effects in it. So you go through in your editing application like Premiere, Final Cut, and you cut it all together based on what you think it should be, but obviously the effects aren't done, so you're just kind of putting it together as best you can. So when you're finished editing and you have a final cut, then we want to bring it into After Effects and composite the heck out of it. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. Now, Premiere works directly with After Effects. So we can actually take all of the footage here, choose Edit, Copy, go over to After Effects, and we can actually just choose Edit, Paste and it will paste all of the edits right inside of After Effects. So this is great because this is where we do all of our compositing. So let's say uh, we want to take this shot here, we'll choose uh, Effect, Key Light, and uh, we'll key out the background real quick. And by the way, this isn't a real project, this is just some footage. And uh, here we have a background that's really cool. And uh, this looks like a music video, possibly. and this is a good way to work. But if you're working on a lot of visual effects shots, it can get a little bit messy. So say I have a bunch of different elements and then I'm compositing uh, some elements over here and things can get, you know, really, really crazy, really, really fast. So right now we have 14 layers, but if this were a longer video, we would already have like 50 layers and then once we start adding layers, it could just get really, really crazy and you have all your comps in one single comp, not a really good idea. So instead, what I want to do is make a pre-comp for each of these edits and do my effects inside of that pre-comp. So here's how that could work. I'll take the layer, I'll choose uh, pre-compose and I'll move all the attributes and you usually want to do this before you start doing effects. So I'll hit OK. Now the problem is, now the comp length is as long as my original comp, so that's not really good because then I have to take it and I have to trim it, you know, it can be a little messy. So, so to fix that, I'll just double click on it and I'll trim the comp to be a little bit shorter. And by the way, if you hold down shift, it will snap. So I'll right click and choose trim comp to work area. So then I'll go back to my edit and oh wait. The footage is now at the very beginning of my comp, so no problem, we'll go back to where it's supposed to be and move it over. And uh, you know, we have to zoom in and make sure it's perfect, you know, you usually don't want to be messing around with the edit because, you know, you can mess things up. So anyway, this isn't a bad way to work because then we can open up this comp, we can do all of our effects and uh, then when we go into the final edit, it's, uh, it's looking good. Now, the really cool thing about working this way is if you're doing a lot of effects that connect together, we can actually see the continuity. So if I RAM preview this, I can actually see how the effects are going to look together um, in sequence. So it's kind of a good way to work, but you really want to make sure that you stay organized. Now, if you're working on a long video with a lot of edits, this method can be a bit of a hassle and frankly it uh, just kind of makes me sad like her face. So we want to do something that will maybe make her, um, you know, happy again. So what we can do is use the script that Video Copilot created called Trim Compose. So here's how it works. We're going to start over brand new. So we're in Premiere, we've got our edit, it's looking good, I'm going to take all the footage choose Edit, Copy, and then we'll come over to After Effects, create a new comp, go to the beginning and choose Edit, 
paste. So now we have all of our edits just like before. Now what we're looking at is the original footage has actually been trimmed to line up with our edit. Now After Effects gives us access to the rest of the clip so if we were to double click on it we can actually see all of the source material that makes up that original clip and in this case the, uh, the entire clip is about 1200 frames long. So in order to use the script here's what you have to do. You have to select all of your footage or all of the footage that you want to have trim composed. So we'll take the first one, we'll hold down shift, we'll select the last one and we'll choose file scripts run script. Now you can download the project file for this tutorial and you should find the trim compose script. So if we take it and we open it, the script will prompt us to name the folder that the pre-compositions will go inside. So you can customize this. We'll just leave it as trimmed comps and hit OK. Now the other question is add handles in frames. Now to start, we're just going to leave that at zero and hit OK. So now what I have is all of my edits have been trimmed down and the edit is exactly the same as it was before we ran the script. Now I can double click on any one of the comps and we can see the original footage here. So I still have access to all of the original footage but it's been neatly and tightly organized into these little pre-comps. So now I can easily open up each individual comp and add the effects inside and go back to my edit and move on to the next one, so on and so forth. Now let's go ahead and undo that. So let's go back to pasting our footage and I'm going to select all the footage and I'm going to choose file, script, run script and we'll choose the trim compose and hit open. We'll leave the comp as trim comps. Now, for the add handles, I'm going to set this to 8. So, whenever you do effects for, you know, movies or TV or something, usually you get a frame sequence that has 8 to 12 frame handles. And what that is, is basically extra frames at the beginning and extra frames at the end. So, we'll hit OK. All right, so what we have is all of our layers have been pre-composed and trimmed, but if we move closely, we can actually see that there's a little bit extra on each pre-comp. Now, the edit remains exactly the same. So if I open up the comp, so I'll go to the very last frame, and if I open it up, you'll actually see that I have about eight extra frames. Now, the reason we do this generally with, uh, with visual effects for movies and things is the director or the editor may want to make a slight change to the edit, you know, by a frame or two, you know, if there's special effects that changes the timing or whatever. So usually you want to work on your special effects um, in a little bit larger of a comp so that if they need to slide it around, they can. So in this case, um, I can come in here and say, you know what, um, with this background, I think I need to slide this over just a little bit. So that's just a nice way to be able to um, do work on a shot without having to then say, oh, well, it got re-edited and then, you know, you have to go in and, uh, you know, retract the footage or extend it, you know, back time it or whatever. So it's a cool little way to be able to have some extra handles um, inside of your comps. Now, let's talk about some other uses for this script. All right, let's say we just shot a commercial on a RED and we have all the raw files and, you know, there are big 4K files, whatever, and we open them in After Effects and, you know, they can be, you know, a bit sluggish. So what you might do is take this pre-comp. So if we right-click, we can choose Reveal in Source Project. And here it is. And I can take that comp, which is really just the original section of that clip, and I can right click on it and I can choose create proxy and I can make a proxy that is either low resolution or it's just transcoded. We could keep it at best quality and maybe render it into a QuickTime or a file that's a little bit easier to load. And that's actually a really good method. And the nice thing about the script is it will only create a proxy for this frame range. So if I were to take the original footage and look at that, which is, 
you know, 1200 frames long. And some of these, you know, this one's 3500 frames long. If I wanted to create a proxy, I would generally do it on that. And, you know, that would take probably forever to render. And it's just unnecessary because you're only working on that one section of the locked edit. So this is really a cool way to actually take all of your clips, add them to the render queue, and we can make a proxy of every single clip at the same time. Now, you probably need to create an output module, and here's how that works. Just come in here, create a new output module. Say we make it QuickTime, uh, let's say Photo JPEG. You know what codec I really have been liking a lot lately? Mm, don't even have it installed, but it's the Avid DNX codec, which is a good intermediate type of codec. But in any case, you want a codec that is really fast and robust. So this one's pretty good, and we'll hit OK. Now, oh, one quick thing. We want to make sure that the post render action is set as proxy. So if we set that, um, we'll call this, you know, proxy HQ JPEG, and uh, we'll hit OK. So then if we take all of our clips and we click on the output module, hold down Shift, click on the last one, we can set it to um, proxy HQ JPEG, which is at the bottom there. And so then it changes it all to that new settings. And then we can just set an output destination by clicking on this, and it will automatically render a proxy for all of those shots. So that's a really, really useful thing um, to have a video file of just this one frame range of your edit. And then once they're done rendering, you can then fly through your edit and uh, you know really move quickly as you're working. Okay, so I went ahead and rendered off one of the clips as a proxy. Now, remember, proxies don't always have to be low resolution. They can actually be the same resolution as the original clip, just, you know, in a more robust format, you know, or a lower quality format, maybe 8-bit or whatever. But that clip can still be useful for a lot of things. For example, if I come in here to the one clip I rendered out, I now have the proxy checkbox that allows me to turn it on and off. And what I can do is I can right click on it, reveal in Explorer or Finder, and here I actually have the video clip. Now, what's cool about this is say I had to do some motion tracking or th some 3D tracking maybe. Well, I can open up Mocha or my Buju or whatever 3D program and I can do my tracking on it on just that frame range. So if you've ever had to work with a really, really long source clip and you just need to track, you know, in Mocha, one little section, um, you know, it can be a little bit of a hassle to open up a, a huge sequence, you know, or a huge long video when you're just working with a really small area. So this allows you just to focus on the area um, you're working on, which is nice. Here's another cool use. Let's say I'm a VFX producer and I'm not actually the one who does the visual effects, but say there's a team of like three or four people that are going to actually do the work. Now, I need to be able to get the shots to the artist so that they can start doing the effects. Now, one way to do that would be to give them, you know, an EDL or give them the original source material and give them the edit in and out points. And that's fine. Sometimes that can be a little tricky if, you know, if they're responsible for, you know, making sure that it's exactly right. Does it start on frame zero? Does it start on frame one? You know, sometimes you don't want them having to worry about editorial type of things. So the other solution would be to render out a sequence of just that frame range. Now, without the script, you'd have to go and, you know, trim each comp and then send them just that section. So what's cool about this is after we run the script and maybe we add eight frame handles, we can actually take all the footage, add it to the render queue. And instead of doing a proxy resolution or doing some low quality thing, we could actually go in there and make it like a DPX sequence, you know, full quality. And, um, you know, we'd make sure our project is uh, 16 bits and we'd render it out. And then we could give the artist that specific shot. So it's kind of like if you work at a studio, um, you get usually a frame sequence of that specific shot and, you know, you do the work on it. Um, so if you're like a VFX producer or you're working with multiple people, and you want to be able to divide the work up, this is a quick way to be able to, uh, you know, create um, 
shot sequences for every single edit in uh, in your video. So pretty handy. Um, maybe there's some other uses I'm not seeing. Hopefully it'll help you guys out. Um, I know I just was sitting there pre-composing like the layers and I was thinking, gosh, there's got to be a better way to do this. And um, now there is. So what do you think about that, girl? Exactly. All right, guys. Well, I hope this has been useful. Now, remember, if you use another editor like Final Cut Pro or Avid or something, there are converters like Automatic Duck that will export your footage, um, your edits, to bring into After Effects. So, um, you know, I'm not sure how this applies to every scenario, but... Um, it will basically do what has been described here. And uh, one other, just, you know, trying to throw as many tips as uh, I possibly can here in the last three seconds. But if I were to bring all my footage in, and I don't want to necessarily say some of the shots aren't visual effect shots, well, I can just skip them and just do the visual effect shots. And then when I run the script, Those, uh, you know, are left alone and everything else uh, gets uh, organized. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, be sure to check out the rest of the website. We've got the blog and we've got the forum. Um, a lot of cool things going on there. And, uh, of course, if you're interested, check out our products. We've got some really cool plugins and some, uh, some packs for doing visual effects and stuff. So I'll stop um, selling you on things. But um, thanks for watching. I am Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time.